So then, as we now see the cleanup begin in the Idaho student case, we can now start to reflect on the fact that, look, it would appear that even though law enforcement are going to retain this site, if you like, as under their control, it would appear that everything that they feel that they need has now been gotten from this place. So there is nothing more that this place can tell them. I see various news reports, and they say how that there's been no motive released. There's been no weapon released. You know, as if this was just something that just happened and there's no explanation for it. And I wonder if that's true. And it forces us to have complicated conversations that some people are not likely to like the content of. And we will touch more on this in tonight's live when I come to you as a magic unicorn, as promised. So what do I mean by uncomfortable conversations? I mean this. It's very, very difficult to speak ill of the dead. But sometimes, just because someone is no longer with us, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't reflect upon the things that someone could have taken the wrong way and it led to what happened. People of certain ages, especially teenagers, young adults, they're not always the nicest people. We seem to be living in a society where these young adults, they don't respect one another. They don't really care for one another, apart from those really in their inner circle. And sometimes you're left to wonder, even then, what it would take for them to turn on even those within the inner circle. A boy, maybe. Money, maybe. Let's not... Well, let's put this out there. That At the end of the day, I wonder what would come out if law enforcement were to offer quite a hefty reward for those missing pieces. Would that be enough for someone to stick a knife in someone's back? <laughs> But what's led me to this? So someone emailed me and they said, have a look at this video. And the link is in description. There's two two links. One from Cluminati, a, a channel that I hadn't heard of. And one from a large news broadcaster. But let's touch on the Cluminati one first. And this is a video that is put together and it speaks of someone who was online and posting stuff online and within this there seems to be a nod yet again to the hannah claire situation and i lead myself to think look we've heard that scott which was hannah's father said look this is nothing to do with it this is you know and i thought and i thought to myself well he's going to say that regardless of anything why would you say anything else he's not going to want his daughter's name to be brought into question with regards to this case because it could ultimately then backlash upon the memory of his daughter and you know that's that's the world that we live in but it doesn't mean that this wasn't done because these people did indeed pulley his daughter and it cannot be ruled out as a motivating factor i've not seen enough evidence to say that it should be ruled out. Now, this video, if you go and watch it, you might want to pause this video, open another window, go and watch it and come back. Remember, algorithm, so don't click me off and then go and get it. Keep this on pause and then come back. But they talk, there's some weird pictures in there, like there's a, there's a cat that's seemingly being held around the neck uncomfortably. He's a kind of... There's an undertone, and then there's messages underneath it. You'll see. There's a video or an image of someone being passed money inside what appears to be a Mercedes G-Wagon. 
and it finishes with Inan Harsh speaking about the fact that he had seen an SUV, like a specked up one, and the downside was the creator made an they made an error and it kind of took the focus away from the video slightly because Inan Harsh had turned around and said possibly a Beamer. And the creator focused on the fact that the vehicle in the video was a Beamer and it wasn't, it was a Mercedes. And it kind of was like a Kansas City shuffle. Everyone's looking over here and they should have been looking over here. Because Anan Harsh didn't actually confirm the brand, but he confirmed the style. And the style indeed was an SUV, which would be exactly what the Mercedes G-Wagon is. So there are elements of this video and what this person has been posting online that goes hand in hand with some of the elements of the case. Now, is this completely coincidental? Have we got a group of people that includes people like Inan Harsh and perhaps they're making up accounts and posts and stuff like that? We've, we've seen it, this sick stuff that happens. You can't trust anything. You can't rule anything out. And it's almost like this becomes a game and then you start questioning whether people are doing it on purpose to make the water more muddy so the things that you want to see and you need to see that clarity is gone and it's gone because people are purposefully muddying the waters but with muddying the waters there seems to be a same thread running through and it is that there's a potential that these victims some of them may not have been angelic. Is that okay because they're not angelic for this to happen? Of course it's not. And I'm certainly not saying that. What happened to these victims was heinous. And there's nothing that they could have done at their age that would have meant that this was the right thing to happen to them. Even if they had indeed bullied Hannah to the point of what happened happened yes it's disgusting and something should have been done but was this what needed to be done and I have a horrible feeling that some people's mindset will be what's good for the goose is good for the gander and I think that's just going a step too far but something happened something triggered this there's another link in the video description I said about the second link, and that is about a party that this house was happening. And that video itself is bizarre. You've got this lad that comes out with zip ties around his arms, like he's been involved in some sort of weird game. But it would appear that this reporting of noise and the loudness and the aggravating of the neighbours that nearly led to a $300 fine just then, it leads you to believe that, look, they didn't really care about those around them. Perhaps an arrogance of we're having a party, we don't really care. You'll see it. That undertone of, I know why you're here, I guess. It's just something that sits uncomfortable, no different than... I would expect from a teenager, young adult growing up today. But it does now think, or it does now make me think that this even more so is someone closer to this group. I do not and cannot at the moment accept that this is someone who was not known to these people. This was just a random, random person who came and did this. Something happened, something triggered someone close to this area. And maybe it's someone that we've seen already. We've obviously seen Jeremy, the neighbour, and he spoke about the fact that this house wasn't really that noisy. They had people around there, they had parties going, but it never got to... Um, you know, be too loud or anything like that. But then on the contrary, we now see that that's not actually the case. People were reporting them. They were reporting them seemingly multiple occasions that nearly led to a fine. There's a huge speaker that could be seen in the window. 
So maybe people were downplaying it. But I say once again, this seems to be a case of either everyone knows something or nobody knows anything. And the more I look at this, the more I listen to what happened, the more I listen to the people I see more footage emerging, I fall on the side of there's a few people that know and they're hiding the truth and they're hiding someone, they're protecting someone. And I refer you back to the beginning of this video. Maybe law enforcement now have to work on the fact that if this is today's youths, then maybe they have to switch up their tactics and find out what it takes to get someone to turn. I'll leave you with it, and I'll catch you all in the next one.